Hello. Um, so this is my repentance stream for today. It's going to be very, very exciting. I'll have you know. Um, as you can see today, I'm advertising <laughs> my uh, my topic of the day. I've been reading Les Miserables, and I have sincerely fascinating thoughts on the shifts of Les Miserables. So I thought that'd be something to discuss while during this. So uh, if anyone should join, feel free to feel free to uh, chime in with your comments about Les Miserables. So let's see. I'm going to random. It's going to be exciting to see if we can get anything done. So, honestly, we have to start. So we start at the very start at the beginning. Begin at the beginning. As Lewis Carroll always advises. Lewis Carroll. Exciting stuff. Okay, so begin at the beginning. Go along until the reach. Go along until the end. So. What would the first real, the first real ship encounter of Les Miserables be? So, I suppose, I suppose anyone would have to argue that Jean Valjean Javert is the first one. I mean, it's true that we don't actually meet Javert until about, but my copy was like 175 pages in. We don't meet Javert for a little while, so I suppose you want to get if you want to get really spicy with the ships the very first the very first one we could talk about would be Jean Valjean and um, Monsignor Bienvenu but I gotta say does anybody ever consider Jean Valjean Monsieur Bienvenu yeah but I can't talk Bienvenu to be a viable ship that was accidental oh that was horrible um, I'm not sure that's anything anybody has ever considered in the entire history of mankind. Um, Bienvenu, of course, being being the man who who buys Jean Valjean's soul for God. Um, what 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 erotic potential is there in this? Monsieur Monsignor Bienvenu, who's quite old. Jean Valjean uh, starts is also relatively old. I mean, ooh, nice. I don't. I don't think anyone would deny that. I mean, Jean Valjean's already. Uh... Oh, that was a little charge. Uh, Jean Valjean's already, you know, like, was already in in his in his forties um, when we first when we first meet him, um, before he becomes Monsieur Le Maire and everything. So I mean, I just don't think that Monsieur Monsignor Bienvenu is sexy enough. Not gonna lie. I mean. If that's what you, if that's what you like, go for it. Yeah, he's he's a good guy, but um, don't see much erotic potential. Once and I mean to consider anything like um, the other characters that Jean Valjean encounters. Oh, this is new. Don't think I'm gonna go for that. New probably should try it. See what's up with it. Not going to. So. We have Monsieur Bien. We have Monsieur Bien. I keep trying to say Monsieur. We have Monsieur Bienvenu's. Oh, I could have gotten in there for free. That's tragic. Um, sister and his maid. And let's be real, though, no one is even close to considering them as. Uh, oh, that's nice. As um, as rom as um, er erotic partners for Jean Valjean. Um, then af after Jean Valjean, I think we all have to agree that's that's when we get into uh, true, truly exciting territory with Javert. I mean, what is there to say about Jean Valjean Javert, Javert that has not already been said by everybody who has talked about Jean Valjean Javert? I mean, there's there's uh, there's the exciting uh, there's the exciting friends friends to lovers chemistry. Um, if that's something you friends to lovers enemies to lovers chemistry, if that's something you like. Sure, if friends, a, a grudging, um, a grudging respect on Jean Valjean's part and utter, unending hatred on Javert's part up until right before the end. Um, we have uh, Javert convinced that a criminal can never change, and Javert and uh, Jean Valjean understanding that he is a man who has, who has changed, who has, uh, ooh, that's nice. Who has who has uh, who has been given his life back? Who as 
who has, uh, oh, so beautiful, who has uh, had his soul purchased for God. Uh, it's, it's exciting stuff. Um, one definitely understands the potential there. Um, I mean, opposites attract, opposites attract characters, certainly. All that, all that rage, certainly. I've been recently been watching the, uh, the PBS, uh, PBS miniseries with one of my friends again, and, you know, I, uh, I personally had never really, um, been terribly interested in Jean Valjean, um, Javert, um, but then, but then we started watching, uh, this miniseries again featuring, and I'm so sorry, I cannot recall the name of the man who plays Jean Valjean, but, uh, David Oyelowo plays uh, Javert, though. He and the, and the gentleman who play uh, Jean Valjean have some chemistry, though. Um, so we've been real big on shipping that specific iteration of Jean Valjean Javert. But, you know, I, I personally have never been the biggest fan of enemies to lovers or anything in that regard, so I mean... But everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I understand. I, th I feel like I understand the erotic potential in that. You know, uh, you never know what's going to happen. There'd be a lot of drama. There'd be a lot of high emotions running high in many different ways. I mean, one one understands it, even if it's not something that one personally likes. Um, but uh, but definitely the PBS miniseries uh, versions of Javert and Jean Valjean, though they are all over each other 100% of the time. You'd, you'd have to see it. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Check it out. Tell me what you think. Tell me how much that version of Javert and Jean Valjean are over each other. You'll you'll see it. You'll see it. I... S s ex extreme spoilers for uh, Javert Jean Valjean shippers in that miniseries, but within like the first five minutes... Not the first five minutes. Sorry, I forget there was that scene that, uh, that uh, Javert got to personally, uh, we got to see Javert personally witnessing uh, Jean Valjean's strength at the beginning, um, saving a man um, from under a heavy object, something that uh, Jean Valjean is prone to doing. Um, but, in re oh, but shortly after, shortly thereafter, probably within the first 15 minutes of our... Uh, of our coming to know is this version of Jean Valjean and Javert, we get uh, Jean Valjean uh, disrobing in front of Javert in order to uh, in order to uh, get his his clothes from his pre-prison days back, and Javert just, just just straight up looks at him naked. And so, I mean, come on, <laughs> come on, it's ridiculous. Well, let's be honest. <laughs> There's nothing like it. This run has actually been pretty good so far, if I'm gonna, gonna just stop to talk about this run for a second. This run, uh, not bad so far, but I have generally been quite bad at repentance, so um, we'll see how things go. As an aside, I've been watching uh, more David Oyelowo stuff, because he's a cool guy. And uh, I was watching him in Selma recently, and he's quite good in that too, so highly recommended, great stuff. Um, but anyway, um, what more what more can be said about Jean Valjean Javert? I mean, there's oh gosh, what choices? I shouldn't. That doesn't. I I shouldn't. If I want to get an unlock, I shouldn't. Ah, oh, the stars, Javert. Um, Justice. The out in the darkness. Okay, no, we're not taking that. All right. So, my zero viewers, I hope you've enjoyed my scintillating uh, conversation about Les Miserables this far. Um, don't mind the helicopter going by. So we've covered Jean Valjean Javert. I would say. Approaching ad nauseum. I say, having not covered it nearly well enough, I under as I say, I understand that there are people who go hard on the uh, on the Jean Valjean Javert and uh, who 
you can blame them. Wow, I bombed that totally wrong. Who can truly blame them? There's always an interesting dynamic to be had with the characters who, uh, who are canonically rivals. I mean... I mean, I have, uh... The past year or so, I've been all up in Ace Attorney and I'm 100% in the Naramitsu camp. The only thing, the major difference about that camp, of course, being that, uh... They're not that that Naru and Mitsu are canonically not only rivals but also friends, and uh, can definitely go with the can definitely get behind a friend's lovers more than I personally can in enemies' lovers. But anyway, we're moving on. To, we're moving on. We're moving on. Um, let's see. Fontaine of Felix. Is there anybody? Who would argue for wanting to see more of Fontaine and Felix? This is the question. I mean, Felix and all of those, all of those young men were true. Who uh, were with Favorites and Dahlia and the one whose name I can't remember. They, uh, yeah, they, they were the worst. They were unequivocally. Ooh, thank you. You were unequivocally the worst. Oh, you get matchstick with that now. How nice. Hmm. Would anyone like to see more with Fontaine and them? Honestly, I can't, I can't imagine there's anybody who's interested in that, not gonna lie. And the whole, the whole scenario was built up simply so Fontaine could be destroyed in the most painful way possible with her child. I'm oh no. That's not what I wanted. Oh, you you become faster too. Interesting. Close shave. So we got oh no. So we got Fontaine and Felix the philosopher and the father of Cosette. Also known as one of the most caddish men ever encountered in literature. Yeah, he, uh, he's not great. I don't think I Oh no, we're excited again. I can't imagine that that's something anyone wants to see. Oh, don't take a second speed down. The real question. The real question behind all of this. Fontaine Jean Valjean, though. No. I think I could, I think I could understand how someone would oh dear, how someone uh, once again could uh, feasibly make an argument for it. I mean, they certainly have a very they have a very profound relationship, but uh, it's one of them profound relationships that I think uh, really does better in a platonic setting. Never really, until this scintillating moment in which I decided to think about every possible combination of uh, Les Miserables ships. I. Uh, had not considered Jean Valjean Fantine. And, uh, once again, all I can really say is I think, I think I can understand how someone might like it after, after he saves her, after he, uh, promises to help her. The only difficulty is, well, for one thing, of course, Jean Valjean is in a position of a great deal of power over Fantine and is sort of, sort of more of a father protective figure um, for her by the time they meet but also by the time they meet she is actively dying oh so glorious um she is actively dying of tuberculosis which does not lend itself i find to romance personal experience there <laughs> does not lend itself does not lend itself to romance um so i mean i say that well knowing full well that um, tuberculosis chic was kind of a thing during that era, you know, all the the beautiful corpses left with their as they say with their 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 slim figures, their white skin, their uh, silky hair, you know. I mean, that was a thing. So, I mean, who knows? But um, wouldn't have been the best for Fontaine. So at any rate, 
Jean Valjean Fontaine. Solid four out of ten. Um, I have not been reading these as I go along because I never intended to, but um, that one gets a solid four out of ten. Fontaine Javert. Now there's potential. Now there's potential for um, for uh, some hilarity. I mean, not to reference other Hugo books within discussion of this Hugo book, but I mean, come on, is anyone else seeing what I'm seeing with regard to this potential Frollo Esmeralda esque situation between um between Javert and Fontaine, where he gets a total disgust boner for her. I'd buy it. I'd buy that for a dollar. I think that could happen. I definitely think that has potential. Once again, the only difficulty being that, uh, that Javert, much like Jean Valjean, does only meet Fontaine. Does this do anything now? No. Does only meet Fontaine at the exact point at which she is actively dying. Not simply, uh, not not simply being afflicted with tuberculosis, but being on the very edge of requiring a hospital, um, and being insensible. So. You know, I, I, in, in a, fa in a, in a fantasy scenario, I, I can, I think that, I think that, uh, I think that it has a possibility, but, um, but realistically though, not sure. But the way Fontaine acted towards Javert when she was convinced that Monsieur Le Maire would, uh, never tell her to be let go from the police, um, and her saying she would give Javert whatever he wanted. Stuff, you know, I mean, uh, I think it's definitely a possibility. Ooh, more bombs. New description. Is there anything else scintillating that can be discussed with regard to Fontaine? Really don't think so. She's dead a little bit too early for her to have too much shit potential, not gonna lie. I mean, I suppose... I suppose if one were to, uh, if one were to take the musical into account, where she literally comes back as a ghost, perhaps there's more. I mean, you want to get, you want to get real crazy with it and go for like one of the boys of the ABC slash Ghost of Fontaine. That's gonna be my favorite shit from now on. One hundred percent. But which boy of the Abe say? The problem being that I do not remember any of their names very well, except the important ones. The um, Algeras, Confer, and Granter. Who we will get to shortly. I believe you me. We will be talking about them very shortly. First I have to, uh, first I have to make, uh, make considerations for uh well hold on just just hold on a second here what other what what other possibilities do i have in between switching to the book of marius and fontaine cosette and everything i have i have totally overlooked the Tenardiers, which honestly is a crime. I mean, who isn't constantly think of the thinking of the erotic possibilities of uh, Madame et Monsieur Miss Tenardier? I know I am. Um, oh, Guppy's tail. It's a good choice. Uh, I shouldn't. I I should not. If I want anything to go right, I definitely should not. So, zero viewers, let us proceed. Mm. 
Man, I made Monsieur Thenardier. I mean, once again, I find myself in a position where I'm simply like, what can I say? They're, uh, <laughs> they're Les Miserables power couple. Um, they're Les Miserables. They're in contention for Les Miserables' worst people. The problem being that the, the dudes who uh, were all up in Dahlia Favorite and the other one. Um, I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's true we see a lot less of their iniquities than the Tenardiers, and uh, almost everything the Tenardiers do is uh, is tainted by some horrible atrocity or other, so... I mean, is- let's- let's be honest, is anybody- is anybody anywhere at any time considering the Tenardiers? Either Tenardier- either Tenardier- I mean, either the Tenardier couple slash anybody else? Gotta be honest, I think the answer's no. Obviously, up in the Internodiers is it's an exception, but uh, have not have not gotten to the Book of Marius yet. First, I have to talk about. Um, I would I would be remiss if I didn't make an attempt to discuss everyone's favorite Shadowball character, Pair for Shadowball. Oh, the possibilities of Père Fauchelevant slash Jean Valjean. Readily imagined. <laughs> Utterly delightful. <laughs> something I know has, uh, something I know that has uh, filled my daydream since I've begun re leading, re yeah, reading Les Miserables again, I will tell you. Yeah, I mean. He's simply the next adult character that we've run into who's, you know, with Jean Valjean. I mean, once again, unless, unless, by some strange twist of fate, you are indeed a person who's considering the possibilities of Tenardier slash Jean Valjean. I mean, listen, I don't begrudge anyone their shits. You can, you can shoot whoever you want. I really don't. I, uh, I really don't care. Um. I would, and in, I mean, frankly, in fact, I mean, I, I mean, I call these things weird. Frankly, I would be, I would be very interested, uh, to talk to somebody who actually had some interest in that sort of, that sort of thing, because I personally have trouble conceiving of it. So, it'd be pretty fascinating. Always up for intellectual debate. If you, yes, you there have some uh, some interesting thoughts with regard to uh, Jean Valjean slash the Tenardiers hit me up very interested to talk about that um, but at any rate I was talking about I was talking about the uh, animal magnetism of Père Fauchelevent now I know what you're thinking. How could Père Fauchelevent and uh, Jean Valjean ever get together when Fauchelevent friend zoned Jean Valjean almost as much as is possible to be friend zoned by saying that he was his brother? I mean, stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened in real life. I mean, have you heard the I'm My Own Grandpa song? I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if they, if they, there was a will, there was a way. Of course, the hope, the, the hopeless thing in discussing literally, uh, literally any ship in Les Miserables, um, and by literally any, I mean literally any involving the two most exciting characters, uh, Javert and Jean Valjean, um, is that both of them are expressly said to be, uh, to be chased. But honestly, doesn't that just make it better? I mean, I know I'm more into it because of that. 
So we've discussed pair for of them all. We cannot discuss anything that either of them might have done with any of the women in the convent. Not because it would be sacrilegious, but because I don't remember any of their names. Yeah, I remember not a single one of their names. I know that one of them was young and good at singing. And I know that one of them was really happy about the fact that Cosette was probably going to grow up to be plain. But, you know, I have, I'm have i still only about halfway through my second read of Les Miserables in like 10 years. But I gotta say, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's the uh, spoilers. It's gonna turn out that Cosette is not gonna be playing. She's gonna be super pretty, and all the Mariuses are gonna wanna meet her and sniff her handkerchief. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, that's good. Sorry, I got distracted by playing the Binding of Isaac for a second there. So let's see. I started talking about the women in the convent simply because I am unable to talk about their ship ability with Jean Valjean and or Père Fauchelevent because I do not remember any of their names. And I barely remember individual characteristics of any of them. I know that they were all extremely, extremely ascetic, extremely pious, um, prone to acts of self-mutilation um, as part of their religion. Um, oh my, this is going so much worse than I'd ever imagined. I was so excited about the spirit hearts too. Um, that's about it. Ooh, thank you. Moving on then. Do we move on to the Book of Marius? I think we move on to the Book of Marius. So I have decided to talk about... I've decided to uh, have this discussion with myself about Les Miserables ships at a rather unfortunate time because I am, in fact, as I've probably said about 500 times now, only halfway through the book at present. Oh, what am I stuck on? Uh, delightful. Meaning that I have not yet gotten to the exciting stuff about the boys of the Abese. What I have gotten to is Victor Hugo's long-winded description. Not, not a bad thing. I love Hugo's long-winded descriptions, but his admittedly long-winded description of the young men of the Abese. And let me tell you, <laughs> this is where the opinions get really intense. So, I'm quite sure, and I, and I understand why, I'm quite sure that the, that the largest pairing within the Abbesse is Angeras Grand Terre, which, you know, one gets, I mean, in my translation, of course, it could be different in other English translations. I, I cannot guarantee that my version is the, uh, the best English translation. In fact, uh, I've encountered another one recently that seems like it's probably, uh, probably better researched, but um, I do not actually have that version. I may consider buying it, but at any rate, my version literally says that uh, the Grand Terre loves Algeros, um, because he is his opposite. And as I've said before, I mean, ev everyone loves everyone loves a good opposite to trash. I mean, see Jean Valjean Javert. Um, 
I hate these enemies. No, just to clarify. I'm, I'm not sure you were aware. Um, but yes, I despise these and I never want to see them again. So. Oh, it's you. <laughs> That's why I haven't finished this room yet. Oh no, why did you do that to me? I am so hurt. They really are. <laughs> I said those other guys with the Bane of my existence and I never want to see them again. Hey. Guess what? Feel the same about those guys. Why did I take that? Ugh, oh, such questions. So anyway, let's see, getting back getting getting back on the track. Getting back on the track of what all of you viewers came here for, which is sick discussion of Les Miserables ships. So, oh my lord, I'm going to die anyhow, aren't I? Um, I understand that, uh, that Algeros Grante is the big one. Oh, we're gonna have to do that, aren't we? And one can see why. However, not sure that I'm the biggest fan reading purely from, oh, you could have been another sun card. Um, reading from the, uh, reading from the perspective of, um, said Angeras, because, uh, gotta say, kinda got the feeling from what I read that, uh, while Grand Terre has a great deal of love for Angeras, Angeras merely tolerates Grand Terre, and, uh, maybe this is something that gets resolved later, maybe this gets explored later, maybe during the shocking events of the barricade in Paris and everything. Algeros and Granter come to a point where they, they show some real your bro-like camaraderie such that Algeros no longer merely tolerates Granter, but in fact um oh this is different but in fact um, gains affection for him that is uh, deeper and warmer than ordinary friendship um, I can't say that I know this is why I should have reserved this discussion for uh, after I was finished with the book but I thought about doing this and decided that I thought it was funny so it's what's happening oh no Saratama Oh no, multiples health upgrades. Alright, so continuing on this truly disgusting discussion for my hundreds of viewers. I have I've given you my controversial opinion on Ooh, it's get all already. I've given my you my truly shocking, controversial opinion on uh, Algeros Granter, because gotta say, and the thing is, I have I have not scouted archive of our own or uh, or any other trusted metric of shipping potential um, to discern what people what what the, what the world thinks about these various ships. But having just read that description of the boys of the Abbey, I'm just sitting here like, what well, Angeros come fair though? I mean, they complement each other. <laughs> they uh, Hugo Hugo emphasizes this fact so well. I, I, I have to say, I I guess I I believe, having conducted no studies and taken no empirical data that uh, Grand Terre Angeros is the big one but I myself am all for I'm all for you know as they say the two the two big blue complement each other what do they call him so they call they call he calls Angeros something like uh, Angeros is the captain and and uh, Confer is the guide and I'm like nice you know they and and I and I know 
that they described Andras as um, looking like an angel, but being very fierce and very ready to fight. Where, on the other hand, I do not recall what, if anything, he said about Confrere's appearance, because he just went all out talking about the angelic beauty of Andras, his blonde hair and his blue eyes and his etc. I do not remember. The only other. <laughs> find this slightly amusing now. The only other member of the Abese whose appearance I do remember being described was, in fact, Grand Terre's. And Grand Terre was described as being very ugly. And uh, Grand Terre was described as being one of those guys who doesn't really believe in, doesn't really believe in God that much and and uh, lives to excess and is constantly trying to make the boys think that he's super popular with the ladies when in fact he ain't popular with the ladies. So that's upsetting. But then again, I mean, I guess if I'm to grant, um, if I'm to grant a little bit, um. Over a little bit more to the uh, to the argument for Grand Terre Angeras. I suppose two things. One, that we can uh, go and assume that the that the that the pretty ugly dichotomy is yet another uh, opposite tract uh, axis upon which we can uh, consider their relationship. Um, but more than that, um, can we consider his? Um, uh, yes. I do want the help, actually. Um, can we consider his attempting to... See, this is... This is always the question when it comes to slash ships. Do you... Consider... Do you consider the fact that a, uh, that a character that you want to be in a slash ship, uh, is going after characters of the opposite sex to mean that they are actually, um, that, I mean, in order for your slash ship to work, that they are, um, some species of bisexual. Or, do you decide, like I think you potentially could with, uh, with Grand Terre Angeras, that it's not that it, they're really, they're really going for these Oh, thank you. They are not really going for said members of the opposite sex. But they are, in fact, um, posturing to try to gain the attention of um, the member of the same sex for which they have such undeniable attraction. These are the questions. These are the questions that we all need to have answered. And as I say, I think these are reasonable questions that if one is uh, looking to uh, explore fictional romances and one could potentially do with Angeras around there but that being said I'm straying from the whoa have not seen that before I am straying what I probably have said that before seen that before not gonna lie I just don't remember um I'm straying from the fact that the vastly superior ship unequivocally bar none fight me is um Angeras Confer. Do I have any more? If, if I don't remember what's, what's after Mom's heart, if anything, now, so I should probably try to sum up. Oh dear, I could have so easily been able to go down to Shoal. Okay, Marius Cosette. Thrilling stuff. Not not great. Marius Eponine, very interesting, very sad, great potential. Great potential for a lot of, uh, great potential, um, as you say. Marius Azelma, who's ever even thought of Azelma, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, I can't decide if Cosette, here's, here's one thing, I can't decide if, uh, Cosette, uh, why? I can't decide if Cosette Marius bothers me more in the book or in the musical because in the musical they met in a day and fell in love and that was the end of it but in the book Marius sort of creeped on her for a long time before actually meeting her um, 
found her father's handkerchief, assumed it was hers, guessed that her name was Ursula, when in fact it was Jean Valjean's continued, uh, continued, uh, fake name, you know, his, his pseudonym of uh, Ultimus Fouchelevent. I just, I just don't know. They're, neither is great. Obviously, there are many, many dimensions to consider with Marius Eponine that are too numerous to name here and that are, are very good. Very agreeable, very interesting. Well, that was my surprising, surprising win at uh, this run of the uh, Binding of Isaac Repentance and uh, scintillating intellectual discussion about the ships of Les Miserables. I hope that you had a good time. I, I did. It was very exciting. And I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Bye.